Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. I want to take a look back at our juicy storm system. It didn't quite didn't quite uh, deliver in, in some of the places uh, that we had hoped to see double-digit uh, snowfall numbers. So we'll start at A Basin. They picked up six inches in the last 24 hours. Um, you know, really was hoping for 10 to 12 in this area. So didn't see that happen there. In Breckenridge, there were some places that just didn't get much. Um, they're reporting five at Breckenridge officially in the last 24 hours. Um, these types of storm systems, when you get these front range events, um, they typically favor divide east. With They tend to have less influence on Summit County and areas west. There are always exceptions. And there was a small exception with this storm in the Elks, the West Elks around Aspen Snowmass, where I was expecting some convection with the initial push. And we did see some higher totals through Aspen Snowmass and the West Elks. Um, but in large part, with these front range storms, you just typically don't see good spillover snow in the Summit County. And Loveland uh, just really underperformed five, six, seven inches. Was hoping for 10, 11, 12 inches um, in, um, in parts of Loveland, the ski area on top of the Continental Divide. Just didn't see it. Um, was hoping for at least a foot, if not more, around Gray's, Tories, Beerstadt. I just don't think that we got that. We might have. Um, but just didn't see the huge totals along the I-70 corridor. All right, let me go into um, we'll go into the intro, my bullet points. So next storm system is going to come in fast. It's going to move uh, north to south very fast out of Canada through Montana, Wyoming, and then blast through Colorado. All that happens mainly on the 4, 427, on the 27th. Um, it'll probably um, linger through the night on the 27th into early 428 over parts of southern Colorado. Then we're looking at high pressure across most of the Intermountain West through early May. Um, Pacific low will develop, and I'll show it to you. It's barely going to move in about a week. Um, there were some hopes that it would actually move into California, into Utah and Colorado, Wyoming, around 4-4. Four, four, Five three five four five five somewhere in there, um, but now the afternoon data is not saying that at all, and I'll, I'll show you that rather dry outlook coming up. All right, back to this. I want to show you uh, my forecast blog. So ChrisTomer.com got a fast moving storm coming. Talked about that. Also look at the freezing level and wind. Um, freezing level forecast freezing level daily max men. So it reaches ten three today in the Wasatch. Drops to 9,400 tonight. The min, the max uh, tomorrow, you can see the numbers on 428 and 429. It gets very warm by the time we get into this weekend. 13.3 on the 29th, which, uh, um, let me see. So you're looking at probably Saturday, Sunday with very high freezing levels. Um, I did a forecast for the LaSalle's a couple of days ago. Very high down there. It's going to be warm. Colorado Central Mountain Zone Daily Max Men's, you can see the levels. They drop to about 7,000 for the next few nights. Um, and then they start to go up this weekend, 12, 8, and 10, 3, Saturday, Sunday. Wind gust forecast, I did a Quandary Peak forecast, a Tories, and a Mount Superior. Um, so we've got some pretty strong winds coming in on Friday, um, even trickling into um, but Thursday, Friday, and then into early Saturday. You can see the numbers here. Um, so if you're interested in the uh, peak gust forecast, take a look at that. Forecast timing. All right, so here is Thursday morning. Storm's gone from California, Colorado, but here comes the next one. You see how fast that happened? I mean, that's in and it's out, mainly on the 27th, very early 28th. And then it's all high pressure into 5.1 and 5.2. There's a cutoff low, or there's a low pressure that looks almost cut off across the across the Pacific, just off the coast of uh, California by the time we get into early May, and it kind of sits there. Let me run this initial part out for you again. So again, storm's out of Colorado. Here comes the fast mover, north to south, and it's just, it's so fast, 427 into early 428, and then it's all high pressure after that. All right, so the forecast pattern. Now, this was the jet from this morning. Shows the cutoff, but it shows energy translating. You can see the flat jet running straight through Utah and Colorado. That would have been an area of low pressure, 535455. Five, five. That's not in the afternoon data. Here it is. Here's the updated afternoon. See, it's all still sitting out over the Pacific off the coast of California. None of it has moved into the interior. So with this forecast this afternoon, 
I now don't have any snow for the interior in early May. And I'll show you those numbers in just a sec. But back to this. Forecast totals from this morning, you can see those there. And let me contrast those to what now I'm, I'm showing this afternoon. So here is 426 to 428. So this captures the fast moving storm up to eight inches potentially. This one might actually deliver a little bit more snow to like Loveland A Basin um, than what we just saw out of this last storm. It'll be close. Uh, nine in Kuchara um, and maybe an inch down in Taos. Taos and the Ski Santa Fe and Angel Fire. Here's period two. Look at this. Blank. For Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. You know, the update this morning, I had snow in Colorado. Now I don't have any. Because if those lows can just sit and spin over the Pacific, then there's nothing. There's no energy for the Intermountain West. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon update. Appreciate you tuning in here and take care.